thank you for coming. Um, well, Buddy's Bothul has been a long time collaborator at NTT. He was here for a, for a year, but he has been involved in a, a, a number of our research projects for uh, quite a while, uh, collaborating from Turkey and, and then also from here. And he comes to teach uh, one part of the MIR course uh, for the masters. And so he's teaching it these two weeks. So then it's a good opportunity to also ask him to give a talk. And uh, that's what he's doing now, so thank you very much. And so thank he was involved, and he is involved in uh, some of the areas of research we do in uh, music uh, assessment, uh, and that's, so that's what he's going to talk about. So thank you. Thank you, Javier. Uh, thank you for your interest uh, for coming here. Uh, so, uh, I will be talking about the automatic assessment uh, task we were considering for the last uh, maybe three years here. And that has started after a big project, that, at, at the end of a big project. That big project was led by Javier Serra, uh, named Comp Music, uh, for about six years. Uh, a large group has considered MIR tasks for different traditions, music cultures, uh, Indian music, Beijing opera, uh, Turkish music, and, and Arab Andalusian music. And that project provided uh, with us with lots of analysis tools because it was long enough and we had a large enough team. Uh, at the end, we had many analysis tools for analysis of music, uh, many well-curated research data sets, uh, lots of publications, and we wanted to make use of that. Uh, and there were a few proof of concept, proof of concept projects following Comp Music project, and they were mainly targeted towards music education. So we wanted to make use of these resources uh, to develop technologies to help music education. Uh, two projects uh, were carried here. Kamut resulted with a spin-off company, uh, Music Mini Labs, uh, now located in India, and they are doing quite good. They produce apps for music learning, uh, both for Indian music and also for uh, Western music, I would say, uh, and they are uh, they have many followers, users, and they are getting some investment. So it's on, on its way uh, in the good direction. And there was the Texam project, which followed uh, another direction. The, we didn't target developing specific apps to teach uh, something specific, but uh, something more modular. And I'm going to be talking about that. Uh, so this is the application named Riaz from Music Mini. Uh, the Texom project had the following aim. Uh, we, we know th there are many MOOC platforms, MOOC referring to massive open online courses, online learning, like Cadenze Udemy Coursera, I guess you all know about these uh, platforms which have many, many courses, not so many for music education, but there exist some. Uh, and there are some music education institutes who create these courses and provide education. And there is some need for technology, which I'm going to explain in a moment. We want to, to build something in between that would uh, help the MOOC platforms and the music, music educators to use some technology uh, in their courses. Uh, mainly to give feedback to the students uh, in an automatic way because MOOC, uh, in a way by default, uh, these courses uh, have thousands of students uh, from all over the world. And if you want to give feedback to these many students, you need some automatic process. That's where we step in. So we have these tools in MTG. Uh, the SNT analysis tools, some data coming from Comp Music, uh, and we have the targeted online education platform which 
for which we want to develop technology. Uh, what we wanted to first develop is a service that runs through an LTI protocol because these systems uh, use an LMS system and you can build a server that communicates with this system and can retrieve data, uh, analyze and then uh, provide data uh, so that they can visualize it to the student or to the instructor, this information. So that's the starting point for developing technology for uh, these LMS systems. Okay. So uh, here is an online uh, music course on the platform Cadenza. Uh, and in such courses, you have materials such as video lectures, the instructor explaining the musical concept and demonstrating uh, music practice. Uh, there are often some theory quizzes, uh, multiple choice questions. Uh, and, but you also want the students to practice music. That's the main target. You want to uh, improve their skill of making music. So uh, often there are some backing tracks over which the students can play and do practice. And then there is this question of how can one provide feedback to this so many number of students on their practice. So they will be practicing and recording sounds and how to provide feedback to that is an open question. Uh, and we can maybe um, uh, have a look at other tools that have been used for other types of assignments. Uh, for example, there are many programming courses online and there are to tools available to do automatic grading. Uh, I, I'm a student of one of the deep learning uh, lectures and I do programming there. And you can type in code and immediately get feedback. And this is quite useful feedback because you know that you are on the right, right track and you have a tendency to continue follow up. And so that type of feedback is quite useful to keep students' attention on the course. So this help exists for programming courses. There are several tools for that. There is the well-known Turnitin for grading written assignments of students. And uh, we would like to do somehow similar to that. Uh, and the contents of our service should be, first, we need to uh, have a system that would help the instructors create easily some exercises. So uh, when you create these assignments, for example, for programming, there is a certain workflow or procedure how to create graded assignments. So we should have something like that for the music uh, assignments. The instructors should have some kind of an interface to design an assignment. Uh, and then an interface for student submission, something that would be obvious for a student to simply click a few buttons and be able to record an assignment. Uh, and then be able to analyze and provide uh, automatic feedback from the recordings. And what we develop should be uh, integratable multi-platform. So Coursera or Canada Academy or any other uh, platform should be able to use it. So it should be generic. And here is the logo for Music Critic. Now, a music performance can be uh, analyzed in many dimensions. This is uh, a slide from a recent talk in Izmir by Alexander Lurch. Uh, and I just wanted to start by considering the dimensions we could do analysis on uh, the performance. Uh, so uh, we have two basic parameters to, or dimensions to consider, the pitch and the rhythm, uh, and almost often in music performances, and also the timbre. So for tempo and timing, uh, well, we have to measure automatically the tempo of a recording, be able to measure macro timing of events. Uh, and for dynamics, maybe 
some performances need to have specific accents, we need to be able to measure those accents. Uh, we need to have a good, accurate measurement of pitch and be able to compute the distance to the target, the target exercise. And also, uh, there is a target to develop a good timbre in music performance. Uh, we would need to measure something related with timbre. Those are the basic dimensions we have to consider. And this is not much studied in our domain. Uh, so this is, again, a slide from the same talk. Uh, out of all of the papers in Izmir, less than 1% considers analysis of real music performances. So this is an open domain. Uh, and I think it's very interesting also for PhD candidates. So uh, three courses were developed together with instructors from India. And this is how the students see uh, our embedded uh, let's say uh, buttons and view of music critic to record an exercise. Uh, that was a huge effort to communicate with the instructors to set up the content of the course, set up the exercises and develop technology that works. Uh, it was about a young, one year of effort to develop it and it's running now. Uh, it's almost two years now. Uh, live running uh, and here is the flow of how uh, a, an instructor and student use our interfaces the re, the instructor here is the instructor view and here is the student view first the instructor should create an assignment within the course that would appear as a list of assignments to the student, and with one click, the student should access the, the assignment. So there is a parametric design of an exercise. The instructor records a backing track, and, or maybe a performance, and then specifies tempo, duration, those kind of parameters in a form. Once that's done, it ends up on the student view with just a few buttons where the student could click and listen to instructor's uh, performance or maybe description and click and record a few takes of performance which would be analyzed and graded. Uh, if you don't have the automatic analysis first, uh, of course the instructor should do it. So that those recordings end up with this view uh, on the instructor page where the instructor could listen to and uh, decide about a grade for different uh, dimensions of the performance. It could be, there could be several, like uh, he could take a decision about pitch accuracy, timing accuracy, or overall accuracy of the performance. So the instructor would take a decision while listening and analyzing, and then it, it would be accessible to the student. The student can listen to his, own, his or her own submissions and see the comments by the instructor. Uh, of course, we would like to uh, skip this uh, hard part, the time-consuming part on the instructor to go through many, many examples and grade manually. So uh, the design uh, assumes that the instructor would do it for hundreds or, well, 200 or 200 recordings, and afterwards he wouldn't need to do it because we will develop a system that will learn from those annotations. Okay? So we want to uh, automatize it once we have enough data, enough annotations from the instructor. So the workflow for us is first discuss with the course authors to come up with some assignments that are well-defined with a well-defined rubric uh, 
which we can analyze and come up with grades because, uh, well, you cannot uh, an analyze all dimensions. Like at the moment, uh, we lack the technology to grade, uh, let's say, musicality of a performance. I mean, we could measure pitch accuracy, tempo accuracy, but there are dimensions which are difficult uh, to grade for the moment. So we have to discuss with the content providers what would be the assignments that could be automatically graded. Uh, we set up that together, define the rubrics, uh, define also visualizations we could show to the instructor or to the student. Uh, and then we collect a tiny data set. It could be through the system or we could set up a data collection somewhere here, like in this room, we ask several people to record, to start uh, with some available data to develop the technology. But ideally, the first target was to collect data through the online course. So I have a running system there, and we, we were planning to get uh, student submissions and annotations, and then we do training validation and then we have the technology to automatize this. And there was also a second course series uh, designed together with Berkeley College of Music. That's an introductory level uh, guitar course. And really introductory, I mean, to play open uh, notes, open strings on guitar, be able to tune the guitar, and just play very basic chords. Okay. Uh, and that's there, it's on, I think it's on about for about 10 months. So we have the other three courses for about two years and this one for the 10 months. And uh, for that course, the, of course, uh, one needs to decide what could be measured and what could be graded. Uh, and for playing guitar, rhythm and tempo is important. The student should be able to play in tempo with expected uh, timing. Uh, the pitch and intonation should be correct, so he should be able to tune the guitar correctly and play the expected pitch at the expected time. Uh, and when the guitar is played, I mean, it should be clean, the sound should be clean. It shouldn't be that noisy or dampened quickly. quickly, quickly. Uh, and the, there should be some good tone. Uh, and these already make up quite a challenging analysis task for us. Uh, with the instructor, the following dimensions were agreed to be annotated. Pitch or intonation accuracy, rhythm or timing accuracy, uh, the guitar tuning quality, and an overall value. And we asked the instructor to label, to pick labels from one to four discrete labels, one corresponding to very low quality, almost completely off, four perfect performance, uh, two is, well, uh, major errors, but still a performance that makes sense somehow close to what's expected. Three is relatively good performance, but it has some minor errors. It's not perfect. Uh, and this, Type of grading is very common uh, in music education. If you go through some of the papers in music education, this four scale uh, is the most common scale uh, you would come across. Uh, and this is the view we provide as feedback for the guitar course. So uh, here is what's expected, the, the two chords and this, the student is expected to play the chords at every beat. Uh, and we need to provide timing errors and also chord accuracy, pitch accuracy, all the dimensions I, I was mentioning. Of course, when you provide that information to the student, visualization is another, an, another issue to be optimized. If you put it just textual information, it's hard to make sense for the student. So it should be immediately obvious by just looking at a graph. And here is the graph uh, provided. You see that uh, this, 
uh, amplitude in the second bar were quite low and the timing had problems. So where the timing has problems, there are crosses. Uh, and this indicates an errors where the green points would indicate that the performance is good enough. Okay. That's the visualization. Now, these courses have been running for some time now, but there are few submissions from the students. That's our basic problem. We were assuming that people would be interested in submitting their performances, but they were not. Uh, so I was following the Indian course for about a year, and in one year we couldn't arrive to uh, more than 60 or 70 recordings. Uh, and for guitar, I think it's the case also. So uh, somehow the students didn't find it that interesting to go and use this tool to upload data and then get feedback. That is a basic problem. And then there was another important problem, uh, especially in the Indian case. We asked the instructor to label, annotate those recordings. Uh, and when we looked at the annotations, they were mainly good, uh, higher than three on average. So either three or four most of the time. And when you talk to the instructor, you see that it was made on purpose to encourage the student to continue. Uh, and when you ask why do you choose three not, but not four or four but not three, uh, there is not an well, it's difficult to have an explanation that you can relate with the parameters you estimate. So that, those annotations were not that reliable. And so this strategy of collecting data and getting annotations somehow at this moment was not that effective. Uh, we were lucky for a few cases where we had reliable data sets. I want to mention that part of the work. Uh, in another project I was involved in Turkey, we had the chance to get recordings of university conservatory entrance examinations. So in Turkey, uh, they, there is an audition for all people who want to enter conservatory in different domains, music theory or performance, all sorts of students, they have to first pass uh, this audition, which includes reproducing melodies that are heard, played on piano, and uh, well, the candidate should sing the same melody, two different melodies, and also repeating a percussive pattern. Okay. Uh, and there is another third form of uh, exercise that the, on the piano, uh, well, simultaneously they play two or three or four notes and they ask the student to recognize, say it aloud. Uh, but that part we will not consider. The, the other parts, they, they videotape all of these because someone could later bring it to the court to say, oh, I did a good performance and they didn't accept me for this or that reason. So they, have, they keep all these recordings in video. Through this project, we could get the audio part of that segmented and make a data set. And we also had the jury annotations. Uh, and this is a good point to start, of start. Uh, the jury con was composed of three instructors. But unfortunately, they were sitting together and discussing together. Even though they provide different grades, there is a communication between them. Uh, the ideal case would be that they have, they don't communicate and they give grades and then you have a better uh, annotation. Uh, but that's the case. And when we looked at the data, we have seen a lot of noise. Uh, noise in the sense uh, that, well, it seems that, uh, for example, if the student performs well on singing the melodies, then, uh, but performs bad on the rhythmic test, then the jury may be inclined to give a higher grade uh, for the, also the rhythmic performance. So there was this kind of noise. After observing this, we said we, we need to re-annotate it. So we just used the jury scores to get some equal distribution 
uh, of grades, some samples, like uh, 200 samples with a grade of 1, 100 samples with a grade of 2, 3, and then re-annotate it. So because when you collect this data set, what you want to have is almost an equal distribution among quality. You don't want just perfect performances, but you need also uh, very bad performances and mid-level performances. This is another difficulty in data collection for this task. So we had uh, two data sets, one for melody reproduction, one for uh, rhythm reproduction. Okay. Uh, let's consider the melody reproduction part. So uh, here is the task. Uh, a melody is played on piano, and the candidate sings it. You have these two recordings, and given these two recordings, you want to uh, m find out how one matches the other. Okay? And you want to give a grade about that. That means you need to uh, analyze pitch of two recordings. And here I plot these two. Uh, the reference recording from piano analyzed and performance recording uh, in red analyzed. This, these are the pitch tracks. Their durations are different because in that scenario there is no metronome. So uh, the candidate may sing fast or slow. Doesn't matter if the melody is right. Uh, this is a tempo invariant analysis, I would say. Now, when you look at these graphs, there are several problems already one can spot. For example, in the analysis of F0, there would be some points where your analysis will fail. Uh, fail meaning maybe in pitch parts you will have no pitch information or there may be some octave errors. In addition to that, uh, the, there, there is no need to match octaves. So uh, the, the singer could sing it at a lower octave or a higher octave. So there could be an octave difference in between and how can one match this information with all of these problems to come up with a reliable grade? That is the challenge here. And the strategy often used is the following. Given the two performances, uh, we first transcribe those F0 tracks. Uh, transcription meaning uh, sequence of notes with durations. Okay. So this is the transcription we have starting from the pitch curve. You see the two transcriptions uh, from performance and reference. Uh, and then an alignment is performed with DTW or so to match the notes. Once you do the matching in note basis, you can compute deviations on note level. So we collect not deviations in durations in each note plus deviations in pitch. And then we compute a distribution of those deviations. And that makes up a feature for us. Uh, and together with that, we can use the machine, a machine learning architecture to map to a grade. So we reduce our problem to matching a feature to a label. Features being the distances uh, between the two recordings. Uh, and here is the results of evaluation we have done with this conservatory data on singing. So this, we call it MAST, MAST data set for singing, uh, have been labeled again here in MTG by, I think, six people. Uh, I haven't put it, six uh, annotators blindly. So we had a small interface to listen to these pairs and decide uh, about the grade. We had 300 student performances, 15 different melodies, and 20 performance melody pairs to be analyzed. So we have applied the standard machine learning testing of uh, splitting it into train and test data sets and then training and testing on the test data set and coming up, coming up with scores. 
And so in automatic grading, uh, the mean error we had on this four scale, one to four, was 0 0.35. And the standard deviation of the error was 0 0.34. Uh, the ground truth is the average of the annotators. Of course, the, well, all annotators do not agree on the same value. So the ground truth is questionable here. So in our test, we first used the mean of all of the annotators. And then there comes the issue of how could one compare uh, with a human annotator's performance in this problem. And we thought maybe we could take out one, of, one annotator from the group of annotators and then compare it with the mean of the rest of the annotators. And if we do it for all of the annotators, uh, we can arrive to some measure for the human annotator. And when we do, did that, for individual graders, they deviate very similarly to the automatic system with respect to the average of the other annotators. So the conclusion we had, which is open to discussion, is we thought our automatic grading system behaves like another annotator. I mean, uh, because, well, if we apply the same test to an individual annotator, we get some similar result. And here is a plot of average human grade to the predicted grades, all of the 300 samples. Uh, we, well, so it, in the ideal case, we would have just a straight line. It's not straight line, but uh, it, at least it's it has that tendency of being on this straight line. Okay. So this is for the melody reproduction. And this is not a bad starting point. I, I think this can serve as a ba baseline. And one can build on top of that from there. Then the other part of the conservatory entrance examination data was rhythm performances. So rhythm can be performed by clapping or by using a pencil, just uh, putting on, on the table. And that was the case for the entrance examination. So the student was given a pencil uh, and producing sound by hitting the table. And they, we have those recordings. So during the examination, the instructor plays the pattern, and the student plays the pattern. And there is the grading. Now, it, there is one problem of this scenario. That is, each time a reference is played, of course, it's different. And the, there is the interpretation of the instructor uh, in that performance. Uh, uh, this is not synthetic, so there is some kind of interpretation. And that was a difficulty. So well, our scenario is there is a master student. Uh, well, master plays something, and the student tries to imitate and we try to measure the distance between the two. Okay. And we made this data set available. Why this data set, but not the other one? The reason being, this rhythm, rhythm performances, one cannot, uh, from the recording, one, ca one cannot identify the performer. But for singing, you can identify the performer, and this is, uh, risky for the conservatory because someone can claim from the recordings later that they did, well, maybe good or bad and the decision was wrong. So the conservatory didn't let us uh, share that, but we could share this written performances, so it's there. Those who are interested can download it and also download the baseline, baseline system I'm going to talk about. So this part of the study is completely reproducible. It's in Zenodo. Uh, so we again used the same interface for collecting data. People were listening to recordings and just picking uh, the grade. And here is the annotator consistency. So these are all of the samples marked as four. For some of the samples, uh, annotators had different choices. Uh, here, well, when you get closer to the middle, the deviation gets larger. 
people seem to agree on the best and the worst, but disagree in the middle. Okay. And this is the case uh, in the human annotation. And the flow of processes for automatic analysis, given the recording, first step is onset detection. And once you have the onsets, uh, you want to uh, quantize this information and just have vectors that have zeros and ones, one corresponding to an onset uh, time point, and zeros, no event. So you end up with two vectors of the same size. So again, the performances may have different durations, but you quantize it such that they have the same size. Uh, and we compute distances from these vectors. There are many distances one can compute, cosine distance, Euclidean distance, edit distance, whatever. And we consider these as features and again use the same strategy of mapping features to grades. Okay. Uh, so here is the evaluation result on that data. Uh, here uh, again, when you develop a system, you want to compare with some other baseline. And there is no other system we could compare to. Uh, but one can compare to the following baseline systems. What if a system just assigns a, a grade of two to all of the uh, performances? Or what if just three is assigned? What's the error there? Uh, or random grading. And then, uh, well, our system with using different onset detection functions. So. If you assign two to all of the performances, well, your distance to the overall grades is not that high. It's 1.12. Uh, so if you look at these numbers, uh, the baseline system we have is a bit better than just giving two or three, well, let's say giving three to all of the uh, performances. This is just a baseline, and this is shared, hoping that people would download the data, download the baseline system, and improve the baseline system. So that was the effort we have done in this task. Several other tasks have been considered within the Music crit Critic project. So we have considered solfege task, and we, at some point, we wanted to develop a course for that. Uh, this, we, we didn't arrive at a conclusion for that. We, did, we don't have a course now. But that is one task we discussed for a long time. And this may come up soon. Uh, melody imitation, I've talked about it. And uh, well, this, there is research activity continuing in that. Court playing uh, is required for the Berkeley course. And we, we continue working on that. And there was, for, some, uh, for one year, a study on improvisation, uh, where in, again, some Berkeley courses, the students are asked to improvise in a scale. And you can measure if that recording is really in that scale or not, how, how many of the notes were out of the scale. So we also have some work in that direction and have developed some interfaces for that. Uh, now I want to start discussing challenges and opportunities, um, because we believe this is a really interesting direction of research, which also has many, many potentials. Uh, even though the, di the initial direction we had to collect data through these online courses didn't really work as we expected, now, uh, there are many other collaborators showing up because uh, many music education institutes are interested in involving uh, technology in their processes. So uh, we are, uh, at, the at, at the moment, we are developing some new projects with new uh, collaborators. And I want to discuss here the challenges and opportunities uh, of this, and there, are, there is some open call for PhD studentships here, uh, and maybe we can all discuss together uh, well, these challenges and opportunities together. First of all, real life conditions for us is often uh, not so easy. 
like most of the users would probably use low quality onboard microphones. Either they would use their laptops in a noisy environment uh, or they would use some mobile device uh, in some noisy environment with low quality microphone. So recordings, we should expect to have some noise and quality problems. And some of the music performances are required to be fast. In Indian singing, there are exercises that you should really sing quickly, uh, moving from one note to the other. And for those type of recordings, pitch tracking is difficult. Uh, so time, uh, also timing estimation is difficult, but we have to know just from the beginning that we will be facing this kind of audio to be analyzed. So there are numerous audio signal processing challenges involved. Just to name a few, these are the well famous topics we consider here in MIR uh, or audio signal analysis, onset detection, pitch detection, detection, court detection. And time, sometimes we assume there have been quite enough efforts and the technology is well developed, but really not for this case because Let's consider the onset detection problem, which is maybe may sometimes considered as the easiest problem if the sound is percussive. Just consider uh, guitar chord playing, and you expect the student to play on time. Now, okay, it's a percussive sound, but y uh, you don't play all of the strings at the same time. But, so. Uh, what is an onset for a guitar chord recording is not that clear. And, the, uh, and how to measure it is not that clear. So the, even the onset detection problem uh, is a problem one can concentrate and uh, do quite a bit of research in there. Uh, for pitch detection, so imagine a recording uh, performed on an onboard microphone with some noise and fast performance of Indian singing. How do you measure uh, accurately pitch? That is, that's not so easy. Uh, so we need to tackle that. Chord detection. So imagine you have recordings where uh, in the recording just one of the notes is wrong or maybe two of the notes is wrong or uh, the chord dampens quickly, quickly, or there is some noise in some of the, only one of the notes, but not the others, uh, or the guitar is a bit mistuned, or a minor chord is played where major is expected. There are so many different possible problems one need to consider, and it's not so easy directly, well, to, to imagine a way to put a grade for that kind of an error. So. Uh, that's also a difficult problem. So we have lots of signal processing challenges there and uh, quite interesting. I mean, this uh, is a point where we really consider real life applications. So we want to develop technology that would serve real life conditions. Okay. To continue with the challenges, uh, there is the data collection difficulty. So I mentioned about the experience we had with the online courses. Uh, so we need data that has different levels of, they, they, that have enough samples of different level, different quality of student performances. That's not so easy to collect. Uh, and getting reliable human annotation is difficult for grading. If you ask just three instructors to grade a performance, it's hardly the case that they would agree on the grade. Most often they would go into long discussions. Okay. Uh, this, is, this design requires some interdisciplinarity, uh, music education, education sciences, uh, plus technology, and it's not that easy sometimes to communicate because the conception of technology uh, for music, music educators and what, if it's useful or not, uh, is, uh, let's say, 
you, something you cannot easily guess unless you get in contact with them. Uh, some are really open to the technology and they would like to use it, they would like to understand it, they've already put effort to understanding it. But most of the music educators, they have some interest, but uh, since there is already zillions of applications out there, they are conditioned by the applications. So if you say, uh, okay, I want to develop together with you a solfege course where there would be grades, immediately the answer would be, oh, it exists already. Because there is an app somewhere with some performance, provides feedback uh, to the student. Uh, so the communication is not that easy, but we can bridge the gap and we can work together. But I have put it as a challenge here. Uh, after the experience of working with Indian instructors for Indian music, developing a course together. So th that is a challenge, I would say. Uh, and, well, starting f from this experience uh, of uh, online course and also grading, uh, we now came at a point to reconsider our goals. Uh, also by the help, uh, by the feedback we got from music instructors, that uh, these apps being used for music education, they provide some scores, some feedback, but they don't provide the information a teacher, an instructor would provide to the student. So imagine the student, as a student, you are, sit together with an instructor, the instructor would give you some uh, descriptive or some explanations to guide you, maybe not on the specific performance you are doing, but uh, some music, musically meaningful information that would guide you to become better. Uh, but we tend to just uh, give grades, uh, some visualizations, and hope that the student will find his or her own way to improve the skills. But uh, we need to redefine our goals together with the instructor to be able to give more meaningful feedback to the students. So let's move on to opportunities because there is a chance that you join us. <laughs> uh, and there, well, there are really interesting opportunities there. Uh, music educators have, in fact, great interest in use of technology. Uh, there is a big conference of music education every year, a world, worldwide uh, conference. Uh, and uh, they have regular parallel sessions dedicated to only music technology, use of music technology in the classrooms. Uh, they have about three or four parallel sessions. If it's a four-day uh, conference, for four days you have just sessions on music technology, use of music technology uh, in the actual lectures. They have interest. So we will easily find collaborators, I think. And there is a large community interested in using online learning. Uh, I have taken several online courses, uh, two music courses. Many, many of us probably have taken some online course. So there is an interest, a large community, uh, to go online and use these resources. So we won't lack users. Uh, and there are some music edu education institutes, like that conservatory who has all these recordings. Uh, they have all this data, and now they are at a point to um, discuss. They are curious about what AI can do with that data. This is the case in many domains, not only in music. I mean, today maybe every company have collected some form of data, and they hoped that AI would make sense of it and would help them understand data better, and it's the case also for Music Education Institute. And they are, some of them are approaching us to work together, which is good news, which is why we have this call uh, for PhD studentships. Okay. Uh, so, there is a new interesting dimension to explore, the, the one I just mentioned. Uh, also, uh, we want to not just grade a performance, but we want to provide feedback that would be somehow constructive. 
and explainable to the student will draw its, his attention and will make sense to him. Uh, so I think this is a, a very interesting dimension, in both scientifically interesting, uh, musically interesting, and also technologically interesting. Uh, so uh, a P for a PhD, it's good that you can start with an interesting question. And it's there already. And there is high potential for commercialization, which is also an opportunity and advantage, because you, one can get other projects uh, and continue the research. So I hope I have convinced you and you are all motivated. Please talk to Javier Serra <laughs> if you want to get involved. Uh, and that concludes my talk. So in terms of timing, not so bad. Yes. The, the fun, fun thing that you mentioned about the onset detection, onset definition, when you play a strum, a strum the guitar. Yes. Uh, I would imagine that this is first onset you perceive because when you play the guitar, you normally, uh, it's a consequence of the physics of the guitar that the other ones come later. But you want to play on time, you have a beat, you will hit hitting the first string on the on the beat, you yes. want to intend to give it. So why not to consider the onset as the first onset of the uh, could Seva help me uh, uh, to answer that question? Because he, he has been the developer of uh, that specific technology. Thanks a lot for the support. So. <laughs> and, and one question is because you have you used these ratings are supposed to be played with a with a metronome. So so the, when you record an exercise, you have a metronome, and then when there are different lengths of the if someone plays a bit slower, then you will have different lengths. That's a mistake. That's a that's considered a mistake. So yes. when you do kind of how what you start working to try to Uh, at different tasks, the strategies were different. For guitar, there is a metronome, and you are expected to play together with metronome. So you don't you don't do alignment. You assume they should have been aligned. Uh, but for the other case of sing, uh, reproducing melody with sing, there is no metronome. Uh, so there there is an alignment problem there. Uh, we use DTW on pitch data, okay. uh, but uh, well, maybe better on chromograms. Both were tried. Uh, well, uh, we tried to comp have a working system. So each for each, we kind of used a baseline existing solution, and we didn't really focus on one specific uh, process to optimize it. So the the processes are kind of standard processes you can assume. Some DTW alignment with pitch uh, and chroma, and the machine learning uh, part is not complicated. It's because there are just a few, we use features and just a few features with 
few number of samples. So the models are not complicated models, rather relatively simple models. Yeah. Please, please, go ahead. And, thank you. Yes. Yes. That means you model the, the, the problem as a classification task, or you do a kind of regression on this whole thing? Uh, thank you for raising that. That part I have skipped. We consider it is as regression problem uh, because well, it indicates level we thought, yeah. not uh, unrelated classes. But so yeah, uh, that was a regression problem for us. So why not you? Yeah, that could be an option. That could have been better. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. But that's uh, not a common practice in yes. education. Yes. In rubrics, in education, it's normally allowed. Yeah. And uh, also, you want to uh, direct them towards not putting everything in the middle. Often, if there is a performance which has some errors, the instructors are inclined to put it in the middle, the grading. And you want to force them to say, oh, it's a bit better, or yeah. it's a bit worse than the middle. And this kind of forces that. But well, the, I think this is open to discussion. I mean, a continuous grading could also be used. Yeah. And then when you think about the other people doing the annotation of K6, but you, I didn't understand if they mark every individual recording, or they, you said about talking about pairs. Do they yes. do all the pairs, or do they have to mark every individual? Yeah, uh, they have to listen to pairs, and and then this decide how close they are. They two, they two, they listen to two. But for singing, it's the piano recording, and we had 15 melodies. So as reference, uh, we had one single uh, recording, and there is the perfor the performances vary, but the uh, annotator listens to the reference and the performance and indicates how they match. Okay, so, so you come with the reference against the Yes, yes, yes. And they say better or worse about how much? Yes, yes. Oh. But they cannot be easily fitted to the internet. Sorry? They? You, you don't measure the difference between the two. They don't say which uh, one they like best. No, they, they don't make a preference. They know there is a reference and the performance should match the reference. Okay. So even if the ref reference has problems, the imitation should imitate those problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the amount of match they grade. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot for the questions. And I can get more if you have. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. 
everything, but it's awful. <laughs> your future is good. So there, for example, could be expressivity and musicality and technique. And some uh, techniques could be assessed based um, assessed on some techniques could be based on timbre and expression. Also, so it's some it's a good and maybe it's good to stick to. Uh, to factors which are considered by music teachers and uh, actually this is a part of the problem to map uh, what uh, music teachers and students think of to my art uh, Yes, I completely agree. Thank you for the contribution. <laughs> that was a weak part of the, the talk. Thank you. Okay, so I think we can leave it here. Uh, so thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for your attention.